bank bar tank weapons for next patch, so Flames of Ambition. We've got a bit of a situation now where the standard kind of, of back bar tank weapons, um, it's possible that we might see different stuff coming through now. So, one of the prominent back bar weapons has obviously always been uh, the Destruction Staff. And the Lightning Staff as well. Now, the reason people have used Lightning Staves on a tank dates back to a couple of years ago now, where Off Balance didn't have a cooldown and you could have a 100% uptime of Off Balance. So when that was the case and we had the option and the possibility to reach 100% Off Balance uptime, tanks and healers all used Lightning Staves. And that was the method of keeping Off Balance at 100%. Um, yeah, so the Lightning Staff situation is, is like an old situation now. And the main reason why we were using the, the, the Lightning Staff for Off Balance was because of the Exploiter passive. So when you cause Off Balance to an enemy, if people have got the Exploiter passive, they do 10% more damage to the enemy. And for quite a few patches now, people have used the Exploiter passive. Um, in more recent years though, the Lightning Staff has become less useful for tanks. And that's because two healers placing down blockade can maintain 100% uptime of off balance. Because it does have a cooldown now, and it does have downtime where it's not active. And you can keep 100% uptime just with two healers and two blockades. So the, the Lightning Staff now, nowadays, like on the current live server, still serves a minor purpose. Like for things like ad pulls, it's good for causing off balance still to add pulls in a stamina group it's still good to kind of have lightning in involved to some degree but overall the lightning staff is, is not a necessity for a tank and it hasn't been for a little while it's not an absolute must have thing anymore and like I say it's because off balance now has that downtime and that possibility where it's not going to be active so two healers lightning staves blockade down on the ground that is going to maintain uh, pretty much the uptime of, of off balance and concussion that you get from that. It also includes the fact that healers typically run a charged um, weapon. They use a shock glyph quite occasionally. Um, a lot of healers will run that. So when you combine the lightning staff, the shock glyph, the charged weapon, they're keeping a really good uptime of off balance and concussion. And a tank is not. So the tank is helping with the concussion and the off balance stuff. By using a lightning staff but it's a kind of a standard thing most tanks are using infused crusher and then the front bar we don't typically run a charge shock that's just pretty standard stuff you don't use that really because you don't need to it's a bit of a waste because we've got the healers that are maintaining most of that stuff so coming into the flames of ambition patch we've now got the situation where the exploiter passive no longer exists it's not there anymore it's not a thing anymore. Uh, so there's been the CP update. They've changed all the stuff in the CP. The exploiter passive is gone. So that means that now, if you've got four people using a lightning staff, it's for nothing because now we're not going to benefit from that 10% increased damage done to enemies that are off balanced. What you are going to get is increased um, damage done with heavy attacks to an enemy that's off balanced. Dragon Knights are going to get increased damage from um, their Flame Lash or whatever. Um, and things like that. So it's not really going to be important at all. It's definitely, in my opinion, not worth having four supports using a lightning staff for off balance that one, we don't really need anymore, and two, it's got that downtime. And it's got that cooldown where it can't be activated, so it can be activated easily already. We don't need to add in the tanks using it as well. So the main weapon that tanks should use on the back bar, in my opinion, is always going to be the Frost Staff. Now, the Frost Staff did get updated last patch, and there's a few things in here that really help when using a Frost Staff. So, the first thing, obviously, we've got is, is Wall of Elements, and when we use Wall of Frost, um, we get the damage shields, and it immobilizes chilled enemies as well. So, the immobilization is kind of okay for dungeons and stuff. It helps on some of the other classes like Templars and things that don't really have a CC, if they place down 
um, the wall of frost and it causes a chilled effect. It also immobilizes the enemies. It can be quite helpful. But the main thing is you get a damage shield for yourself and for some of your group members as well. Now the reason the damage shield is quite helpful is for fights where there's projectiles hitting your group. That will uh, absorb some of the projectile. It will also proc this last passive, this destruction expert passive, which when you absorb damage using a destruction staff damage shield, you restore 1,800 magicka, and this can, can occur every 10 seconds. So not only do the damage dealers gain sustain by you using a frost staff, so if you're a tank and you've got two tanks using two frost staves, when they cast their blockade, if they're taking incoming damage from a projectile that uses the shield once every 10 seconds, they're going to get 1,800 magicka. So it's a little sustain tool as well by using it. So it can be utilized in projectile fights to give your group sustain. Not a huge amount, but every 10 seconds, a little bit of a free magicka never does anyone any harm. It helps to keep up the damage so people don't have to do as many heavy attacks. Um, and, and it's just another way of, of benefiting from sustain. So there's that. There are other skills inside here that are benefited by um, using the frost version. So we've got destructive uh, clench, which immobilizes and taunts enemies. Now, this isn't any use whatsoever, but it's still like a taunt. It's still got a frost thing that's tank related. It's clearly aimed at tanks because it's the taunt, it's an immobilization, and it's a frost based skill. Um, and then again, we've got another one here with Impulse. So this is uh, Frost Ring provides minor protection. So as you can see, like the Frost-based skills are offering group utility, and, it, and it's and it's going to increase your group survivability. And that's with the Frost version again. Um, and then if we go into like the passives and stuff, we've obviously got um, if you use an Ice Staff and the Trifocus passive now. You block with magic instead of stamina. Not always that useful, but it can be utilized in a double frost staff tank build. When you do a fully charged ice heavy attack, um, you gain a, a your damage shield as well. So you've got like another damage shield from using it. So you get two different types of shields by using an ice staff. Obviously, ancient knowledge passive. Equipping an ice staff reduces the cost of blocking by 36% and increases the amount of damage you can block by 20%. So we've got like damage mitigation, cost reduction of blocking. There's there's like a, there is a real reason to actually use the ice staff. So, when you block damage with a lightning staff, it offers you no additional protection. So you just block and you've got your normal damage mitigation. If you use a frost staff and you block with it, it works similar to a shield. You get 20% um, increased damage that you can block. So it obviously offers you an additional level of protection. So you're able to do all the jobs that you need to do as a tank with the bat bomb weapon, but you also get the defense factor as well. Um, and then you've obviously got that passive we mentioned where you get uh, Magicka from absorbing a shield. Now, the main reason to use a staff at all is for the blockade, um, the wall of elements. And it's to maintain your crusher enchant. So as a tank, there's very few situations where you wouldn't be using it, but you're gonna use an infused crusher back bar weapon. And by using blockade, it will stay there for the whole duration of the skill. So when you use element of blockade, that lasts for 14 seconds. Your enchant procs every five seconds. So it will proc it on cooldown every time, as long as your blockade's on the ground. And that is an important thing, an important, re an, in an important reason why we use it. It's because pressure increases the amount of damage our group can do. And by keeping this on the ground, we're able to proc it on cooldown repeatedly um, and then the group can do more damage so that's that's that really you've also got the flame staff the inferno staff now the only real function for using a, a flame staff on this particular dlc the flames of ambition dlc would be uh, would be to prop this particular monster set so in Kratz's behemoth uh, monster set, when you deal flame damage, um, you, so you've got to deal flame damage, you create a, an aura that protects you from fire damage, and you, your enemies inside the aura take 5% more flame damage. So using the flame staff, this is pretty much its only function on a tank, is you place down your blockade of, of fire, 
and it would just proc that on cooldown pretty much as long as you maintain it down on the ground um, you don't need to though you don't need to run a flame staff just for that monster set next patch you can just use a flame enchant it does the exact same thing but this is just like if you didn't have an ice staff you didn't have a lightning staff you can use a flame staff it just doesn't really offer you anything um, apart from the possibility to proc this particular monster set other stuff that you could potentially use for a tank um, for your back bar weapon you've obviously got the bow now this is more something I'd potentially use as an off tank and I sometimes use a bow myself when I'm doing the Locusties hard mod fight in Sunspire um, volley is the skill that you're going to be using for this and this is to keep your crusher again the infused crusher and you keep it up by placing down Lee. Um, it would be the endless hail morph which increases the duration and it works the exact same way as blockade um, it lasts for the same duration uh, 14 seconds it'll keep procking your enchant over and over again the difference between well th the bow is actually better for maintaining your crusher enchant rather than using an ice staff or a frost like any kind of staff and the reason for that is when you place your endless hail on the ground the enemy that is in the very center of the endless hail is the enemy that gets the um the crusher proc applied to them with a blockade it's the enemy at the front of the blockade and if you move your position or an enemy walks in front of the enemy that you're trying to blockade then it's going to proc on something else and it's not always reliable to actually proc your blockade with a staff and sometimes when an enemy is coming in front of you or walking past or there's the, there's an enemy kind of slightly to your side because you your blockade radius is so wide and so far um, depending on like the hitbox and where the enemy is really located based on the hitbox and stuff um, it could proc on other targets quite easily whereas endless hail is actually a little bit more efficient because it will just proc from the very center so as long as you put down an endless hail right over the middle of a boss it would only ever proc on them even if other enemies came into the endless hail so to, to be honest it is, it is kind of better the only problem with using a bow is the fact that it's going to cost you stamina to cast those abilities. So 3,334 stamina is a lot of stamina to lose every 14 seconds while you're potentially blocking a boss and its attacks. On the flip side, when you're using a staff, when you put down a blockade, it's costing magicka, and you're able to gain magicka while blocking through your magicka recovery. You're not able to gain stamina back while blocking from your stamina recovery. It doesn't work when blocking, so obviously when you've got like that's an expensive ability in my opinion 3334 stamina if you also combine this with the facts if you were using something like stone giant on a dk or you're using power of the light on a templar tank or any kind of stamina skills basically on top of your endless hell every 14 seconds you're going to really start to struggle with your sustain so that's the only real reason why you don't really use a bow Aside from the fact also it doesn't offer any defense, the same way as an Inferno Staff and a Lightning Staff offer zero defense, um, and the Ice Staff does, this offers you zero defense again. So it, you would take the same amount of damage if you were blocking with a bow as you would with a Lightning Staff. The Lightning Staff does have other skills as well that are quite useful. So you do have um, Venom Arrow, and this causes enemies to be interrupted. Uh, but again, the same problem. It's going to cost you in stamina, and it's going to be a problem for your sustain in most situations. Trying to keep, um, trying to keep using that skill while blocking, um, and trying to maintain your taunt and your heroic slash, and maybe other stamina skills as well. And you're going to have a tough time to use this for interrupting. Um, but you, you could, you could if you really wanted to. If you really wanted to, if you're an op tank who is looking to push more DPS for whatever reason, maybe you're going to use a maelstrom bow and you're going to keep up extra damage, then obviously you could use a bow. And you could off-tank with a bow. It's not going to be too much of an issue in, in some trials. In most trials, like in more of Lorcash, you could easily off-tank with a bow back bar because it's a low damage trial. In Halls of Fabrications, you could off-tank with a bow, and it would probably be better on things like the second boss where you're kiting the bosses around the edge. You could use your bow, and you could put down um, Endless Hail on the boss. On the first boss in, in, in Halls of Fabrications, you can do the same. So you kite in the first boss um, away from the group and the, the other boss is at the entrance. You can cast your Endless Hail onto it. So the bow has got some good functions, but I would say mostly for off-tanking. 
um, for, uh, especially when you play it at range. Again, on VSS, the two fights on there, you could maintain Crusher and help maintain Crusher on the boss or some other enchant as well. So maybe you would be doing Crusher as the off tank, the main tank would use a flame enchant on the back bar with a frost staff. That would be a possibility and the off tank could be casting endless hail um, onto the boss at range uh, with uh, with their endless hail, their crusher, infused weapon and that would uh, give you that option as well. So a bow does have more utility than people realise. It's probably, in my opinion, after the ice staff, my second choice would be a bow more than a lightning staff. Some of the nice little passives as well, you've obviously got things like um, Hasty Retreat gives you a little speed boost when you dodge roll, so you're a real bad one. Um, the other one's not really super important. you obviously got reduced cost and things, that's nice to have but not vile. Restoration Staff. Um, now a lot of people ask me this, is Resto worth using? Is, is it a good thing to use on a tank? As a conventional healer type Restoration Staff, no. If you use it in the correct way, then it is useful on a tank in four-man content. Not in Trials, I would never use a Resto Staff in a Trial, unless I was in Kind's Aegis. So for Kind's Aegis, you want to be able to use a Resto Staff if you're going to play as the off-tank. As the main tank, uh, you wouldn't use it though. But if you're doing four-man content and arenas, so Dragon Star Arena, um, Black Rose Prison, Dungeons, DLC Dungeons without a healer, then the Resto Staff is definitely possible to use on a tank. Now, using a Resto on a tank would typically just mean you're using it for combat prayer. The reason you use it for combat prayer is to buff your group with a minor berserk. Uh, and also increasing the resistance is nice for yourself. So you, when you cast it, you proc it on yourself, you get the extra resistances, you buff your group and increase their damage. That is why you would use a Resto on a tank in a dungeon group or a four-man group. You'd also potentially use it for uh, Siphon as well. Um, so you'd use Siphon Spirit, which applies minor life steal and minor magic steal. So rather than use like Ellie Drain on, uh, as, as a tank, you could use that, which is going to give a heal. And so instead of using Ellie Drain on your bar and um, Blood Altar in a dungeon group, you could two for one it, two skills for the price of one inside Siphon Spirit. So that would be another skill you'd potentially use as a tank. In terms of the other skills, these are all quite expensive. So if you use uh, this, these particular skills, they're a little bit pricey in terms of the magicka cost, and they don't offer very much in return. So you could potentially use this for a little bit of healing. Um, obviously, Radiant Regeneration, it's, it's a very small heal over time. It's a little tick of healing, but if you are really struggling in a dungeon group, um, with a certain mechanic, then you might consider it. But yeah, like, other skills, because you're not specced out, like things like Illustrious Healing, it's not really worth it. It's such a low amount. Radiant Regeneration wouldn't be too bad. Um, and then Steadfast, like you... Ward Ally, it's not a massive shield at all. It's not really worth it, but you could definitely use this um, as a tank, like I say, for four-man content. It's, it's definitely got its uses. And one of the uses as well is heavy attacking um, to get resources back. So when you heavy attack, well, you've got to restore when you block a spell. You wouldn't really block on it. Uh, when you heavy attack, you get 30% more magicka. Um, and then increased healing. So you do get the increased healing to, to low health allies as well. So if you've got your healing ticking, that's going to be beneficial. Um, and obviously major mending and stuff. So there is some function there for using the rest of the staff as a tank. You need it for Kind's Aegis if you're the off tank. You could use it in dungeons if you don't have a healer. You're not going to be as good as a healer, but it's definitely going to give you some group utility. Um, and then for back bar weapons, that's pretty much it. So you're never like you're never going to really use dual wield at this point in time. So in the current game, um, in in the current live server on the Flames of Ambition. There is no reason to use dual wield, and one of the reasons is because when you use a one-handed weapon, your crusher enchant is half the value, so it's not going to do anything of use for your group. Having a half, like your group relies on you to be using a crusher enchant, infused weapon, two-handed weapon to get the full value. If you then switch to a one-handed weapon, it's only half the value. It becomes a bit pointless. So there's no real function there, and there's not a great deal of utility in terms of helping your group with a dual wield. So you wouldn't use that. Uh, for two-hander, the only time it's really worth using two-handed weapons is when you're doing solo content. 
it's not really got much function for group content. Um, everything in this particular, uh, everything in this particular weapon skill uh, is is all selfish skills and damage based, and it it's not going to provide you with any support. The only time I've used this is obviously if you've seen me, it's when I'm doing like pug content where I'm with random players. Uh, when I'm doing solo content, I use a twenty weapon, and I use the skill uh, rally because it gives a nice heal. So I literally just use it for that. I wouldn't use a two-handed weapon as a tank um, for, for g general tanking, like if you're doing organized dungeons, if you're doing um, arenas, if you're doing trials, you wouldn't use a two-handed weapon. But in the situation where you want to add a little DPS, you can use a two-handed bat bar, you can do it for overland content, you can use it in random dungeons to speed things up a bit, while also being able to kind of keep up your tanking stuff. So, uh, that's it guys, that's it for your bat bar weapon stuff for next patch.